As an artist and designer, I have a, a singular goal of uh, creating art and communicating and entertaining people um, and enhancing the atmosphere of hunt camp, of diehard hunters and outdoors men and women. That's my market, and I wanna create art for them to help enhance the environment of their home office hunt camp. That can happen one of two ways for us. That can happen with a fine art piece, uh, like an original oil painting or a canvas print of that original oil painting, or with one of our other popular prints and posters like Growth and Maturity, The white Tail Buck, uh, Flyways of North America, The Grand Slam print, Anatomy print, and a brand new one coming out this fall. But the way those are done are drastically different. On original oil painting, what I will do is I have a concept in my head of something that I wanna create. Uh, might be a scene, might be a pose of an animal, something like that. And what I will do is I'll take uh, photos that I've taken myself or from a reference photographer or stock photos and I'll combine those into a single composition. I'll do that in Photoshop a lot before I go to actual paint. Um, then I'll spend an afternoon or so sketching and studying that animal and that pose. And that helps me understand a little bit more about the anatomy, the angles, the shape, and what I'm going to go for in the painting. It also helps me work out some of the compositional issues. And once I've sketched for you know half a day or so, I'll have a little bit better grasp of what I want to convey in that painting. From there, I'll sketch the scene out on a canvas. I'll put down an underpainting layer, and then I'll start painting color on top of that. And the goal is to, again, to bring an animal and a scene to life through oil painting. After that's done, we'll uh, wait a little bit of time uh, for the paint to dry, varnish it, frame it, sell the original. Before we sell the original, I will take a high-res photo of that. So we've got it in case we want to you know, license the image, in case a nonprofit group wants to feature it in their core pack, in their banquet program, um, in case we want to make prints ourselves, or for just our own reference. Uh, so I have a high-resolution digital file of that. When we do some of the other art, the, po the posters and the, the paper prints that have become really popular, that's a little bit different process. Um, graphic design is primarily done like on a Mac uh, it, through InDesign, Photoshop, Illustrator, some of these programs. And what you're doing, you're still trying to communicate a message, but as a graphic designer, you're taking art information, copy, infographics, and you're putting that all together to communicate that. With those, we will, I'll take a concept like growth and maturity of the white tail buck. That's all about how to age a deer on the hoof and, and like a celebration of his life cycle and the changes that he goes through. Um, I actually hire out a guy, a buddy of mine, Cameron, and I'm a designer by trade, so is he, but I like his look, I like his style, and I wanted some outside perspective on these. I wanted to have um, his input and I wanted to see a little bit of a fresh take. Sometimes I'm too close to a project and so I wanted some fresh perspective from him. So I will come up with the concept, write out all the copy. Um, I might spend two, three weeks doing research, initial sketches, kind of concepting the whole piece. Then I'll meet with him and give him the copy and some of the rough images. And then from there, he'll kind of craft, you know, how the information is laid out. While he's doing that, I'll go to work on high res art. So a um, little bit more refined art. We'll take the time to really scan it in well, create digital images that can be used in the design piece. And then from there, we'll go back and forth and, and revise a little bit. Like we might have to move, you know, certain art might fit better on one side of the print than the other. Certain copy needs to go. Um, a lot of times we cut copy, like it's too copy intensive. So we'll cut some of that out um, and just focus on the key information that, that hunters want to know rather than, uh, you know, full page PDF type deal. The goal there is to craft something that's entertaining, inspiring, and that people value for their hunt camp. And so we have to do, it's kind of chiseling. We have to, you know, chip away over here and chip away over here to craft that out. Once we have it down, we will go through and proof it. We'll actually print the piece out and then proof it multiple times. Usually, you know, usually eight to 10 times we'll go through and I'll tweak art, we'll tweak information because we want to have everything done before we go to the printer. The printer on this is a whole different ball game. Um, 
with our canvas prints, we literally just bought a new Epson printer that we can print our own canvas prints on. Uh, the printer for the paper prints and the posters that we do is actually in Richmond, and it's a big printer. Totally different ball game. When we proof the art and we're, we're set on it, we'll send the digital files to them. I'll upload it to them. They'll pr print out a hard copy. We'll look over it again, and then we'll actually go to, to burning plates. Um, in this printing process, a lot of people just think, you know, I just click print out of Microsoft Word and a, a Word doc kicks out of my, you know, HP or my DeskJet inkjet printer. And it's not like that at all. Uh, this is a plated press, so it's a big time operation. You only do it once, you only get one shot at it. And we're here proofing at our printer, Worth Higgins and Associates in Richmond, Virginia. So we're gonna take you through this whole process and come take a look at how big this printer is and how involved it is. So this whole thing right here is our printer. It'll go all the way down this, it's probably 15, 20 yards long, and we'll show you where they proof it on the other side. Right here we've got some printed copies coming off the press. Um, I've already proofed them, we adjusted the color a little bit, pulled a little yellow out. I approved them and now they're going to press. here's where the bulk of the color work is done. So once we approve them, we have a color profile set, they'll continue to check for color as we go through the press room. So this is done with a scanner here and digitally here. If we need to adjust color, they'll adjust the color one at a time, cyan, magenta, yellow, or black, and it's all done digitally. The, the printing process here is a four color plated press, and you have four metal plates and each one of those plates has a color on it. You have cyan, you have magenta, you have yellow, and you have black. And just like as an artist, I can mix blue and yellow to make green, the, the printer will lay down a dot pattern of these different colors to make a full color image. And virtually every printed piece you see is done in CMYK color mode. You have these four plates, and the printer itself is probably the size of a, a shipping container. I mean, it's a big printer. You actually load it from the top, the, the plates. So we will submit the final art to them, and they'll burn plates for each one of those colors. And then the single piece of paper will roll through, and it'll hit the, the magenta plate, the cyan plate, the yellow plate, and the black plate, and each one of those patterns will lay down the colors to produce a full color image. Once we get to that point at press, the only thing you can do is shift colors. And there's a guy there that's got a whole uh, system set up on how to do that, how to just bring one color up 10%, drop another one 10% and get that dialed in. Once, we, once I approve that, I'll look it over and I'll look through a little magnifying glass. Once that's approved, they will save that profile in that printer. They'll, they'll print the full run and then they will save those plates. I think they save them for up to 10 years. So if we ever want to rerun that, they get the plates back out, they pull up the profile, get the paper samples that we want, and then run them again. Um, but yeah, it's a really involved process. We actually, like all of that has to be done in person. Everything we've done up until that point has been over, over the mail, shipping stuff back and forth. But the press check is what they call it. That, it's actually done in person. And we have a time that we're on press. So once we approve, they print our entire job, we come home, and a couple days later, the prints arrive. And we inventory those here. You know, we've got a climate control warehouse over here, and um, everything ships from my studio. Uh, you know, we've had, we've experimented in the past, and I say experimented, we've tried it once or twice, uh, having things print on demand from another vendor. And I just don't really, I've never been happy with it. You know, I want, I want my work to have a high standard. I want it to be high quality. And you just never know. You can't always trust what that vendor is gonna ship to your customer. And it's a direct representation of me and my work. So we haven't done much with third-party vendors or drop shipping or fulfillment just because of the quality control. And that comes with 
canvases, prints, apparel, just about everything. So we've, over the years, we've brought things more in house. And you know, that's one thing that I'm really proud of. It's, it's taken, I've been on, I've been working for myself for about a decade and you try something and it doesn't work and you try again and you try again and you try again. And slowly we've kind of got things dialed in to where, you know, all of our prints, everything is made in the USA. And I'm proud of that. Um, I'm proud of our crew. You know, we've got a growing group of people that work here and we work really hard to, to have great customer service, to, to eliminate all the friction that can happen when you're ordering online uh, direct to consumer. And so we really appreciate the support, you know, hunters and, 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 you know, men and women that love the outdoors. That's who supports us. That's who sticks by us. And we appreciate you guys being along for the ride. So thanks for the support and uh, stay tuned because we got some really cool stuff coming out this fall.